and clap this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. God bless you. you. May be seated. Thank you, Tim. Great job as always. Thank you, worship team. Appreciate it very much. God bless you all. Amen. On this rainy Sunday. Praise the Lord. I'd like to think we needed it, but I don't believe we do. Praise the Lord. At least I know my yard doesn't need it. Like I told, it was Ron I was talking to earlier. I got a pretty good walk to my mailbox, and if it doesn't stop, I'm going to have to get a rowboat just to pick up the mail in the morning. Praise the Lord. So. God is good. Amen. And uh, appreciate you all being here. Praise the Lord. What was it? There you go. Amen. That's my backyard. Praise the Lord. Awe-inspiring. Praise God. You know, some people, you know, they, they, we're all kind of compulsive. I mean, I know I am extremely uh, kind of OCD in a lot of different ways, but uh, I like to think of it as just kind of a cute little attribute that I have. <laughs> but uh, my wife, uh, whenever she's down in the dumps, she says, whenever I get down in the dumps, I just buy another hat. And I said, I wondered where you found those. <laughs> Okay, okay. So I've had some mental issues, and at first I wasn't going to have the brain transplant, but I changed my mind. <laughs> yeah. All right. So you don't want to cooperate this morning? That's fine. You know, I never, I never was a huge math fan. In fact, my geometry class never did anything. They were all out of shape. Okay, I've heard better too, but come on. Can't hit a home run every time, praise the Lord. All right, praise the Lord. I want to talk to you this morning about restoration and reformation. Uh, praise the Lord. You know, I think that a lot of things that we read, uh, we look at the Old Testament, and we see, you know, from a New Testament perspective, we look at it and we think, how stupid could these people have been? to not see what God was trying to convey to them, you know, what he was trying to get across to them. But the truth is, within the church, we had the same issues that they had. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why it's all there, not just so we can have a lesson in uh, history or that we can have a way of pointing our finger at them and saying they're really stupid and we're really brilliant, but so that we can see the issues that we're dealing with as well and may not even recognize them. And so that's uh, basically what I want to talk to you about this morning. Uh, we, I, I'm not going to, I don't want to name now. I, I, I want to say this, but I don't want to say it in a way that sounds like I'm talking about somebody. So I want to gossip, but I don't want you to think that I'm gossiping. Okay? That's kind of what I'm saying. Well, phrase it in the form of a prayer request. Then it's that's exactly right, Peter. That's where we came up with that. Okay. Amen. I want to tell you about somebody, but instead I'm just going to ask you to pray for him because... Yeah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Uh, no, actually, what I'm saying is we've had people come and go, you know, over the years and so forth. But <clears throat> what's interesting is an individual that uh, uh, used to be here and left because of uh, well, various reasons, but issues pertaining to control and religious kind of stuff. Well, it's come to my uh, knowledge that uh, they went to an, have gone to another church, have found a church, and thank God for that. I mean, I want them to be in a church somewhere. I mean, I don't want them being just out here freaking out someplace. But, but the weird part about it is the church that they, that he went to, or they went to, is the church that many of us came out of. I mean, it's just unbelievably religious. Uh, demanding and requiring all sorts of things. So it just struck me as so odd. I'm not angry about it at all, not in the very least. Uh, it, it's just that it, it dumbfounds me right. that someone would find that as a yes. place to go. I mean, uh, you know what I mean? As, as, a, as a future or as a kind of a revelation thing, you know? I mean, it just... So anyway, uh, that, was on, that was on my mind. 
uh, as I was preparing this. And then uh, thinking about the church, uh, you know, in general, religiously speaking, I mean, uh, how, how most of the world perceives the church, and therefore how we sometimes even perceive it, even when we're talking about grace and being, you know, set free and so on and so forth, there's still issues, you know, that we deal with. And so without confusing you any further, I'll just stop there. Amen. And we'll just go to the scripture. Uh, Hebrews chapter 13, verses 1 through 14, Sheila. Hebrews 13, verses 1 through 14. This is disturbing. I'm looking for the rest of it. Because this is bothering me. Somewhere in the world there is a chicken with a bad gap in his, in his coat. Oh well, that's disturbing, but we'll move on. Let brotherly love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality. Let's see if we can find the King James again. I know that thing keeps moving around in there, but yeah, it's a long time ago, but there, there it is. Okay. It just helps me keep track of where I'm at in the scripture. So let brotherly love continue. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unaware. Remember them that are in bonds as, as bound with them, and them which suffer adversity as being yourselves also in the body. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee, so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Remember them which have the rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God, whose faith follow, considering the end of their conversation. That word conversation actually translates lifestyle. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Be not carried about with divers and strange doctrines, for it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace, not with meats, which have not profited them that have been occupied therein. That grace, not with meats, he's... Look, first of all, Paul's talking to Hebrews. Right. So he said, uh, it'd be, don't get all wrapped up in these weird doctrines, because it's a good thing that the heart is established with grace and not with meats or with offerings or with observances, okay? Because again, it, this is the book of Hebrews. He's t talking to Hebrews, right? People that were under the law. Right. Which have not profited them that have been occupied with them. So those that have been occupied with this keeping of observances and so on and so forth, it, did not, it didn't profit them anything. So we have an altar whereof they have no right to eat. Now altar is where they would <coughs> slay the animal, but it was also the place where the priesthood would take their portion of whatever the sacrifice was. That was how they, that's what they lived on. That's what they ate. Okay. So he said, we've got an altar, or we have a sacrifice, that they have no right to eat, which serve in the temple or the tabernacle. Separating, in other words, the believers from the Jews, non-believers. For the bodies of those beasts whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin are burned without the camp. That's key here. Wherefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. Let us go forth, therefore, unto him without the camp, bearing his reproach. For here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. Praise the Lord. So, here's the message is that it is finished, right? It's Jesus only. Jesus alone. Amen. And I believe this message is for the church today. Not just for the Hebrews 2,000 years ago. It's God still speaking to us by the Holy Spirit to this very day. Amen. So, uh, Hebrews, again, I'll just give you this little preface, was written to first century Jews. It was there to help them understand the old covenant had passed away. 
They had been, for generations, for millennia, they had been raised with all of these rules, all of these observances, all of these rituals, and now all of a sudden, they're gone. They're taken away. And they're having a tough time with it. They've never known anything else except these religious exercises. And now all of a sudden, Jesus comes along and says, it's finished. That book is closed. We're moving on. And those rituals and those rules that you've been following are of no value. They're, they will profit you nothing. That's what Paul's trying to get across to them. Or the writer of the book of Hebrews, which I believe is Paul, although others disagree. So the old covenant had passed away. They're in a brand new, a completely new covenant. Amen? It's the covenant of grace. All right? And he's telling them that it, it's not a a mixture of law and grace. It's not a mixture of Jesus plus their works right. or their observances right. or uh, religious traditions. It's the, the kingdom of God, he says, it doesn't come by observations or observances. We, we think of it as, it, well, it, you can't see it. That isn't necessarily true. He's saying the kingdom of God doesn't appear by observances, by the things that we do by the rituals that we observe, right? right. So that's the well, that's what's behind that. All right. Now look, let's look again here to Hebrews 13, and we'll read ver verses uh, 15 through 21 this time, Sheila. Hebrews 13, 15 through 21. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. Now think of the context of this. I'm going to I'll get into this maybe a little bit further here. But think of the context of verse 15. We just came from 14 where he says, you know, we're looking for this city, but uh, it's a continuing city. And, and prior to that, he says, but it's not about these observances. It's not about the, the rituals. It's not about the meats and so on and so forth. Here's, here's your sacrifice. That, those were the sacrifices they understood. Now, Paul's trying to give them a whole new diagram for life, right? And he says, so by him, by Jesus, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God. Now he's telling you, this is how you move forward. This is what you've been, but this is what you're going to be. This is what I'm trying to get across to you, he says. So let the sacrifice of praise to God continually, that is the fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name. This is the sacrifice you've got now. The only sacrifice you've got now is the sacrifice of praise and offering from your lips. Not from your barnyard or somewhere else, amen. Right. But to do good and to communicate, forget not. For with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. This is what Tim was talking about earlier, what we have just sung about. This is what we, these, these are our observances today. You're not, it's not a rule book, it's just, hey, love other, love other people. Right. Yeah. Be a blessing to other people, amen. Make your sacrifice a, a valid, real sacrifice. Amen? Obey them that have the rule over you, and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls, <coughs> excuse me, as they that must give account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. Pray for us, for we trust we have a good conscience in all things, willing to live honestly. But I beseech you the rather to do this, that I may be restored to you the sooner. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Yes. That sums it all up because what he's saying is it's God in you that's yes. going to be doing this, not you anymore. Because right. you've already proven you couldn't do it. And that's why we have the new covenant, and it's God now, yes. Christ in you, the hope of glory. It's now God in you that's doing this work. Praise the Lord. Yes. All right, so no more animal sacrifices, right? This is what we do after or beyond the old covenant. It's our sacrifice of praise, not bulls and goats, just our praise to God, our love one for another. And how many of you know that can be a sacrifice sometimes? Yes. Praise the Lord. Don't look at your spouse. But, amen. <laughs> Hebrews 13, 9 through 13. I'm moving right along here. I, you notice I didn't even... 
I haven't looked anywhere. This is right here. Praise the Lord. Ching. Praise the Lord. Okay. Be not carried away with divers and strange doctrines, for it's a good thing that the heart be established with grace, not with meats which have not profited them that have been occupied therein. We have an altar whereof they have no right to eat which serve the tabernacle. For the bodies of those beasts whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin are burned without the camp. Wherefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. Let us go forth, therefore, unto him without the camp, bearing his reproach. Now, I'm going to get all kinds of weird this morning. Not unusual for me, but just because this Bible... There isn't one thing, and this is what amazes me and what I find more and more as I get older. There's not one thing in here that's just in here for no reason. There's not an uh, an or, an I, an it, a begat. It's all there for a reason. And it's all about revealing the finished work of Christ. So, with that in mind, outside the gate. Why? Why outside the gate? Remember, these are Jews who have a, have, they've got all the Torah, they've got not just the five books of the Bible, they've got the Psalms, they've got all the written scripture of the Old Covenant and scrolls. So they know what Paul is talking about. Now we may look at it and think, that just really doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. They knew exactly what he was referring to. Because he was speaking to their religion and they're being separated from it into a relationship. Okay, so they have all this scripture. They've been taught this stuff all of their lives. So let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 23, verses 10 through 14. Part of the Torah, part of the first five books of the Bible, which they all learned. They, they, every one of them had to know it. Okay, so look what he's saying here. Deuteronomy 23, 10 through 14. He said now, these animals, they took them outside the camp. After they sacrificed them, they, they, they butchered they, the bodies, the, the, you know, the off all, all that was outside. And that's where Jesus was. That's where he was crucified, outside the gate. Right? So if there be among you any man that is not clean by reason of uncleanness, that chanceth by him by night, then shall he go abroad out of the camp. He shall not come within the camp. But it shall be, when evening cometh, he shall wash himself with water, and when the sun is down, he shall come into the camp again. Thou shalt have a place also without the camp, whether thou shalt go forth abroad. And thou shalt have a paddle upon thy weapon, and it shall be, when thou wilt ease thyself abroad, thou shalt dig therewith, and shalt turn back and cover that which cometh from thee. Are you following here? For the Lord thy God walketh in the midst of thy camp to deliver thee and to give up thine enemies before thee. Therefore shall thy camp be holy that he see no unclean thing in thee and turn away from thee. Now imagine, just think about this. Imagine the wilderness journey. Moses is leading like three to six million people are the estimates. Now I don't know if you've ever thought about this or not. Maybe I'm just sick. But this had to be a logistical nightmare. When you think about this, Mike, three million people, and you've got to find resources for all these. I know you kind of had some of those interactions with, but on a much smaller scale in the military. I mean, who's, who's dealing with three million troops, you know, at one time? But that's what Moses was dealing with. So there weren't any rest areas in the desert, you know. I mean, there wasn't a place to pull over. So how many times do you think they had to stop and go to the bathroom? I told you, you probably hadn't been thinking about this a whole lot, but <laughs> that's right. Take a few kids on a trip, yeah. and it'll all start to dawn on you. But so maybe you think it's not important. But God thought it was important. He thought it was important enough to write it in the scripture that we just got through reading. He told them that if any man is unclean by reason of that which chances him by night. I love the poetry here, but I mean, I've never said that to Sally. I think I'm uh, take a chance tonight. Praise the Lord. <laughs> no. But he said, which chances him by night, he should go forth outside of the camp 
and come not within the camp. So if he should get any, I'll call it religious dung on him, he would need to wash himself with water and wait till the sun goes down so he can come back into the camp. Right? That's what we just read. The Lord told them to go forth outside of the camp so that when he walked among them, there would be no uncleanness. Right? I'm coming in to the camp and I don't want to be finding any mess. Take it outside the camp. All right? Look at Deuteronomy 23, now verse 14. For the Lord thy God walketh in the midst of thy camp to deliver thee and to give up thine enemy before thee. Therefore shall thy camp be holy, that he see no unclean thing in thee and turn away from thee. All right? So God's going to come into the midst of the camp to destroy our enemies from before our faces if he comes in the camp and doesn't find any uncleanness. Right? right? So then there has to be a place outside the camp where we can get rid of our uncleanness. Right. Are you with me? Uh, he's still talking to us. Deuteronomy 23, verse 13. And thou shalt have a paddle upon thy weapon, and it shall be when thou wilt ease thyself abroad, thou shalt dig therewith, and shalt turn back and cover that which cometh from thee. This is exciting, isn't it? I mean, I think everybody's really... <laughs> Bathroom humor. That's not what I'm doing. I'm, I, seriously. In other words, he issues to every man as standard equipment a paddle. Uh -huh. Literally translated a shovel. It's kind of a porta potty yeah. that he would carry with him all the time on his belt somewhere so that when he had to go to the bathroom, he could literally go outside the camp, dig a hole, and cover what came forth from him. Yes. Hmm. Right? Yes. That word paddle is from the Hebrew word, if you go to Strong's Concordance in the Hebrew section, it's number 3489, and it's translated as a nail, paddle, pin, or stake. Now, so you say, well, what's this got to do with anything? I mean, how, how is this relevant to this message? Because what's happening here was that he was showing them how Jesus got rid of all of our religious dung as well as all the byproducts of our flesh on every level yes. and any level. Yeah. Hebrews 13, Jesus. 11 through 13. All Israel shall hear and fear and shall do no more any such wickedness as this is among you. If thou shalt hear, say in one of thy cities which the Lord thy God hath given thee to dwell there, saying certain men and children, this is not what I want. No, I know, hang on. I'm just Was well, that just, just to see if I knew what I was going to read? I get it. Praise the Lord. For the bodies of those beasts whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin are burned without the camp. Wherefore, Jesus also that he might sanctify the people with his own blood or make the people holy, yes. right? The people with his own blood suffered without the gate. He was crucified outside the walls of the city. Yes. Let us go forth therefore unto him without the camp, bearing his reproach. So he tells us that outside the camp, Jesus suffered without, outside the gate or without the gate, and what was happening was Jesus took a nail, yes. right? Yes. And with that nail, look at Colossians 2.14. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. He took the nail... And got rid of all of our religious dung. Yes. He got rid of all the byproducts of our flesh. And all of the refuse. All of our stinking mess. Yes. That comes out of us. Yes. And he took it outside the camp. 
nailed it to the cross, yes. dug a hole, and buried it in the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea. Amen. And he's asking us to go forth outside the camp to him without the camp bearing his reproach. Or in other words, going without religion. Yes. Going without observances, but simply going to the finished work of Jesus outside the camp. Yes. Yes. 1 Corinthians 6, verses 9 through 11. 1 Corinthians 6. 9 through 11. So people want to talk about, oh, well, you know, you still got to be this, and you got, you got to be holy. The, this is the only way you're ever going to be holy. The only way you're going to be sanctified is be, by getting outside the gate yes. to where his finished work was, yes. to where the crap ended. Yes. Amen. Yes. So you can be washed to get back into the city. Because yes. we have a city that we're looking for, a continuing city. But we have no continuing city. We got one that's coming down out of heaven, praise the Lord. So you know, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor, extor nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such... Where's some of you? Yeah. But you are washed. What did he say? You get outside the camp. You got this problem. You got to cover it up. You got to take care of it. And then you got to be washed yeah. so that you have access back into the city. Yeah. Amen. So such were some of you. But you are washed. You are sanctified. You have been made holy, right? But ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. I think you ought to get a hand clap for that. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So outside the camp bearing his reproach, it's at that place that he washes us with pure water, the scripture says. He cleanses us so that we can come back into the camp clean so that the Lord God can walk among us and defeat our enemies. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Once you understand this, once you see it, how Jesus dealt with our dung, our old nature, amen, our flesh. You come to a place of cleansing. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. And we got people wanting to go back to the yeah. dung hole. Yeah. You know, I mean, they're, they're wanting to... Yeah. You see what I'm saying? This is why it baffles me when I hear things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right, look at this again. Hebrews 13, 14. For we have, for here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. All right? Revelation 21, verses 2 and 3. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. This is the continuing city we're looking for. This is the city we're wanting to get back into after we've gotten the dung taken off and buried and yes. taken care of. And now we've been washed and we're looking to get back into the city. This is the city we're looking for. Yes. Amen. New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, or the temple is with us. It's us. Amen. Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and He will dwell with them, and they shall be His people, and God Himself shall be with them and be their God. He has declared us yes. cleansed, holy, yes. righteous, so He can yes. come into yes. the camp, amen, and defeat our enemies, yes. whatever they are. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. All right? Now, we take another little turn here to the left. Nehemiah chapter 1 Verses 1 and 2. Now, I actually taught on the Nehemiah years and years ago and never quite grasped all of this. I mean, I understood what it was. It was coming to the, to the city that had been, you know, run down and destroyed. And he was assessing the city, basically, and, and determining, you know, what they were going to have to do moving forward and so forth. But uh, this is something altogether different. Nehemiah 1, verses 1 and 2. I can't. Praise the Lord. The words of Nehemiah, the son of Hakaliah, and it came to pass in the month Chislu, in the 20th year, as I was in Shushan, the palace, 
that Hananiah, one of my brethren, came, he and certain men of Judah, and I asked them concerning the Jews that had escaped, which were left of the captivity, and concerning Jerusalem. Now, here's the deal. He's come to act, assess the city. Right? Let me read this again because it's not up there for you to continue to look at. But the words of Nehemiah, the son of Hakaliah, and it came to pass in the month of Chislu, in the 20th year, as I was in Shushan, the palace, that Hananiah, one of my brethren, came, he and certain men of Judah, and asked them concerning the Jews that had escaped, which were left of the captivity, and concerning Jerusalem. They're getting ready to go to the city. Check it out. Assess it. All right? Nehemiah, the name Nehemiah means the comforter. It's a type of the Holy Spirit. He comes in the month called Chislu. Chislu translates hope. He comes in the 20th year, which is the number of redemption. And he comes into a place, Shushan, and Shushan literally means the lily place. A symbol of resurrection. There was one person with him. I gotta tell you, it gets to me sometimes. Praise the Lord. There's this one person with him who's important. That's Hanani. Hanani, that name means grace. I mean, this blows my mind. And eventually, if you read on, you'll find that Hanani becomes the governor of the city, governor of Jerusalem. So we've got a man. I'm just going to sum this up. We, we have a man called the Comforter. He's coming in a month called Hope. In a year of redemption. In a resurrection place. With a man by the name of Grace. Who becomes governor. Grace begins to rule and reign. That's the purpose of the new covenant. That's the city that we're looking for. A continuing city, not a city that's temporary in time and space and geography and matter, but a continuing city, yes. an eternal city. Yes. Romans 5, 17. Jesus. That's Nehemiah. That's old covenant. Sure. God couldn't have been talking any plainer yeah. of what his intentions were. For if by one man's offense death reign by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Grace has to become the governor of your life. Yes. To have the benefits, to have the reality of what God has promised. Yes. Nothing else is going to work. I don't care. All the sacrifices you want to make, all the clothing changes you want to make, all the hairstyles, all the other, any and everything else you want to do is not going to make a difference. Right. This is what's going to make the difference. Amen. Amen. Nehemiah comes into a city and he comes there to survey their condition. All right, let's go back. Can you get to Nehemiah now? Yeah. All right, let's go to chapter 2, verses 13 and 14. I went out by night by the gate of the valley, even before the dragon well. This is at Jerusalem. He's got to Jerusalem now. And he says, he went out by night by the gate of the valley, even before the dragon well, and to the dung port, and viewed the walls of Jerusalem, which were broken down, and the gates thereof were consumed with fire. Then I went on to the gate of the fountain and to the king's pool, but there was no place for the beast that was under me to pass. So he was riding on this donkey or an ass or something, and it was so low that he couldn't get in through that with on the back of the donkey, all right? So the first stop is the dragon well. The dragon well and the dung port. Mm -hmm. The dung gate is where Jesus was crucified. Mm -hmm. Amen? So if we're going to be part of this reformation or this revolution, we've got to recognize the condition of the church. Now the reason the place was called the dragon well is that Tradition, Jewish tradition was that the head of a dragon had been cut off there. So first step in restoration or reformation to the church is we've got to tell people the devil has been defeated. 
We're not trying to defeat him. No. He's already been yes. defeated. Amen? Yes. And that Jesus has spoiled principalities yes. and powers. Amen? Praise yes. the Lord. This word dragon literally translates jackal or dog. Yeah. So that connects me to my next thought, which is Philippians chapter 3 and verse 23. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the concision. Verse 3. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. So Paul's not talking about dogs that bark in your yard or in your neighborhood. Amen. He's identifying this word dogs with evil workers or these people who are of the cutting or the group of concision. These Jews who wanted to bring Gentiles and Jewish believers back to circumcision, back into the law to mix the law with Jesus. And Paul said, look out for these people because they're going to mess you all up because this is not about you getting circumcised or not being circumcised. You've already been circumcised, a circumcised circumcision, not of the flesh, but of the heart. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. So Judaizers is who he's talking about. Circumcision. So he's dealing with those who want to bring a mixture of law and grace, yes. of Jesus plus right. your observances, yes. your dress length, yeah. your hair length, yeah. facial hair, no facial hair, amen, long sleeves, short sleeves, televisions, no televisions, yeah. mixed bathing, and I'm not talking about in your bathtub, that's going swimming with, in the same pool with people of the opposite sex. You think, are you nuts, Nathan? No, I'm, t I'm just giving you some of the rules, wow. amen, that we live with. Wow. Praise the Lord. And many, 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 many more. And still they come short of what the Hebrews dealt with. And yet we've got people that want to leave <laughs> having been cleansed and access into this continuing city or this holy city or this eternal city and they want to go back to something temporary yes. that they think they're controlling yes. and all they are is in a pile of crap because yes, they, yes. they, ha they can't get cleansed except one way and that's by Jesus yes. that gives them access back to the city yes. Yes. praise the Lord yes. so don't let people give you a bunch of junk yeah. I'm using this word a lot here today but I don't care give you a bunch of crap about what you got to do and don't do to be saved. There's one thing, and that is to believe on him who yes. has died for you, who gave himself for you. Yes. That's it. Everything else is taken care of by that one act. Yes. Praise the Lord. All right, so glory to God. Amen. Let's look at... Uh, Philippians 3, now let's go on to Philippians 3, um, 3 through 10. Praise God. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Though I might also, this is Paul speaking, he said, Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he has whereof he might trust in the flesh, I have more. Mm -hmm. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law, a Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dumb. 
that I may win Christ. Yes. See, Paul yes. knew exactly what he was talking about here. We read yes. that and we just go, it says, oh, it's just garbage, it's worthless. No, he's speaking in the context of what we're talking about here this morning. And he's yes. speaking to Jews or Jewish converts who think or who are still thinking in terms of the law of observances. Yes. And Paul's saying it's all crap and it belongs outside the city and unless you get it out there and get cleansed from it, you have no access into this yes. eternal city. Yes. Praise the Lord. In other words, Paul says he counts all that religious garbage that he came up under as dumb. Yes. All of the rules, all of the regulations, all of the doing and the not doing and the whatever, it was all crap. So it brings us to the whole concept then of Nehemiah who has not only come to the dragon well and discovered the head of the dragon's been cut off, that the devil's defeated, but he also realized you can't drink from the well, which he talks about the king's well is right there, you can't drink from the well of Judaism or religion or from the jackals or dogs of the concision if you're going to be part of a reformation right. or a restoration. That's right. Remember, he's there assessing the city because they're wanting to restore it. Praise the Lord. So next he comes to the dung port. Because if you're going to come into Reformation, you've got to understand some things. You have to get rid of the dung of self-righteousness that comes from performance-based religion. Paul counted all of his religious background as dung that he might attain Christ. So to bring this back around, when Nehemiah came to the dung port, it was actually outhouse row. Yeah. Praise the Lord. It was God showing him how to get rid of all of the byproducts of the flesh. Yes. Hebrews 13, 12 through 14. Mm -hmm. See, there's a lot of grace preached, but the problem is, a large majority of the people that hear it preached don't understand it any more than they understood the rules of the law. Because they don't see the context. And that's what I'm trying to point out. That's what I'm trying to show you. That it isn't just, hey, this is a freebie. This is a pass, you know, to heaven. No. He's showing us how God just minusculely, uh, if that's a, even a word, in the minutest detail, had this in his mind before the foundation of the world. And he tried to use the law to show people what, he re what his real desire was, what his real heart was for his people, for his children. Wherefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. Let us go forth, therefore, unto him without the camp, bearing his reproach. Remember, Paul's talking to, to, to Hebrews. And he's talking to them, and they know exactly what he's talking about. He's talking about Deuteronomy, and he's talking about Nehemiah. Yeah. Let us go forth, therefore, unto him without the camp, bearing his reproach. For we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Jesus. Well, the deal is, church, we've come to the city. We have gone outside the camp to the place where the dung port was. The place where God got rid of all of our crap. And now you see, because of that, the dragon's head is cut off. He has no power over you. He's been defeated. Amen? The devil is defeated. Not only was the devil defeated... But the jackals, the dogs were destroyed. All the religious dogs of the concision have been dealt with. It's the work of the comforter, the Holy Spirit, that leads us and guides us into all truth. Yes. Now, I like dogs. I've had dogs as pets. But not these kind of dogs. No. These kind of dogs, you shoot. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You run them off. Right. We've been washed. The enemy is defeated. 
right? Yes. Because once we're washed, we can come back into the city, and now God defeats yes. our enemies before us. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. All right, last scripture, and we'll wrap this up. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 25 through 27. Ephesians 5, 25 through 27. See, knowledge is power. Yes, it, is. it just is. And God's given us the wisdom of the ages. Yes. And we've dumbed it down yeah. to some religious exercise that, that profits us nothing. In fact, it makes us wore out, burned out, fed up. When all he wanted to do was set us free yes. and let us see, it's yes. dealt, I've dealt with it. You don't need anything else. Yeah. Nothing else is necessary. i done it all. I finished it. I've washed you and cleansed you so you have access to the eternal city that comes down out of heaven. Praise the Lord. It comes from God. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Now, I believe that. You know, have one individual that that's all they ever want to talk about. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Because it was a manipulative way of controlling somebody else. Sure. Right? The problem is, husbands love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. We want wives to submit to husbands. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> I'm in charge here. Preach it. I'm the boss. I'm the head of this house. Well, only an idiot or someone who's not married would ever even attempt to say that in truth. Okay, so I want to be in charge and I'm in control and you will obey. Ooh, ow, ow. <laughs> Can't even look her in the eye and say that, praise the Lord. <laughs> But he says, he qualifies it by this. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. What were we doing, amen, that so caused Jesus to love us unconditionally? Nothing. We were all screwed up. Yeah. So you don't get a pass when your wife acts up. Right. Sorry, but ladies, you can all drop the extra offering up at the office on your way out. I'm just saying... It's, that's not what God is talking about here. Of course, there should be mutual respect and love and understanding and forgiveness in any relationship, but certainly in a marriage relationship. But that's what God is trying to show us here, is that as Christ loved the church, gave himself for it. So why? That he might sanctify it or make it holy, cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Yes. That he might present it to himself. So it can come back into the city where God wants to be there to protect us and take care of us. Amen. Present it to himself. A glorious church. Yes. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. That's what Jesus did for us. Yes. We're, not, we're not cleaning this thing up. We're not making it holy, spotless, without wrinkle. Amen. He did. So that he could present it to himself yes. spotless, yes. perfect, yes. holy. Yes. That's what you are. Yes. Praise the Lord. The only reason you wouldn't be is if you didn't accept the grace of God. Because without that, there's no access into the city. It's by your own works. And how many of you know, no matter how much you scrub, you can't clean yourself. Not enough. Praise the Lord. And y'all may not have a paddle. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I mean, you got to have something to dig with. Yes, yes. And some of us had to really dig deep. Because yes. there was a, lots of stuff needed to go in that hole. Yes. Amen. True. Praise the Lord. I told you about the big paddle sale at the boat dock, didn't I? It was quite an ordeal. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We come back into the camp, cleansed, into the city that's come down from heaven, whose builder and maker is God. 
And we walk in Jesus. without spot, without wrinkle, totally accepted in the beloved, yes. blessed, protected, yes. provided for. Yes. Right. No weapon formed against us can prosper. Right. Not when God's walking in my yard. Yeah. Amen? Right. Don't come around here with your dog. Mm -hmm. Amen. He'll send him squealing up the street with his tail between his legs. Praise the Lord. He's a good God. He's done everything that needs to be done. Let's get the crap out of the church and just let God rule. Let God run the show. Amen. Praise the Lord. See, this is freedom. We give up one kind of prison for another. The prison of our sin, the prison of our failure, the prison of our self-doubt, the prison of our uh, self-accusation. For what? For a prison of more rules, more regulations, more demands that we can't keep. And here's the deal, church. Your mind wants to play these games with you. Every time you screw up, it wants to tell you, filthy. You better find a paddle and get to digging. No, the hole's been dug, yes. the crap's been buried yes. in Joseph of Arimathea's yes. tomb. Yes. Never to be revealed or seen again by God. Right. And it shouldn't be seen by you. Right. You shouldn't accept it. If it comes, it's a lie. Yes. It's outside the camp in a hole somewhere. Yes. I've been washed, I've been cleansed, yes. I'm in the city. And I'm not coming out. Right. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand clap. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Who said we don't love plumbers? Praise God. That's right. I didn't see no butt crack. I just, I'm just saying. You know, plumber's butt, whatever they call it. Yeah. I'm just saying it's all clean. It's all done. It's all taken care of. My, how spiritual is this? <laughs> Amen. God doesn't have a problem with this. This is God's stuff. This is God's way of telling stories, you know? This is Jesus' way of doing it. And we're, we're so paranoid. I mean, there are churches, if I'd said crap, they'd have been hauling me out the back door by the ankles. You know, with a, yeah, by the, to the dung hole, yes. Praise the Lord, thank you. Well, Sheila knows because, well, we went to the same church for a while, praise the Lord. I'm telling you, God has taken care of it. Not, think of that, think of this. You know, this is just, when you start going down these roads and God just starts speaking to you in all kinds of ways. But I'm thinking, just like, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they come out what? Without even the stink, without even the smell. That's how we come out from outside the gate. We come back in the gate, not even the smell of the world, not even the smell of the unsaved or the unconnected to God. The smell of a sweet savor, a, a, an aroma of praise and worship that follows us everywhere we go. Praise the Lord. One more hand clap. And look. Praise God. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for your patience. Amen. Don't let the devil lie to you. And when you hear that dog bark, just give him a kick. And watch him run. Hallelujah. Praise God. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. I'm getting a little <coughs> angry.